Now, using sage is an amazing way to amp up energy, bring in love, abundance, and clear out negative energy. But there is some side effects that most people don't really take into consideration when they get their sage. Remember when you're doing sage that you're literally walking around right behind it. So any of the smoke that's coming off of that sage is literally coming right at your face. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, you're going to be inhaling a lot of this. It can also bring up eye irritations. It can bring up sinuses, either stopping or flowing a lot, or it can bring up like this deep cough because you're literally breathing in that smoke the whole time that you're saging. So keep that into a, so keep that in mind and make sure that you're using using your sage correctly. If necessary, take a break from time to time when you're doing the sage so you can get a, a few deep breaths without that sage smoke coming right into your face. With that being said, one of my favorite tips to tell people is when they're going to sage is you want to make sure that you have great ventilation when you are saging. So you want to make sure that you have some flowing energy in there. So I will say open up windows at each side of the house so you've got that flowing. A lot of times I'll still crank down the AC so it's kind of blowing out that smoke a little bit. The energy is going to stay, it's going to clean things up, but it's going to get rid of that smoke. My third tip is really a basic one, is that whenever you're doing the sage, you want to make sure that you have something to catch the ash that's coming off of your sage. A lot of times people just have an abalone stone, and the more sage ash that goes in there, that abalone stone is usually small, and it can keep it very, very hot. So one of the things that I often use is literally just an empty pie tin. I know that sounds like crazy weird, but it actually works because it's big enough where I can put the ash in there. If I need to, I can set it down and it's not going to burn anything. I can also take breaks in um, like having the smoke in my face because I can just leave it in that tray and it's not going to hurt anything. The other thing I will say is make sure that you know where the water sources are. Um, I did have an incident a couple of years ago when I was saging somebody's house and um, the sage started to fall apart it came into my tin but then it made the tin really hot and so then I had to walk to the bathroom really really quickly and put it in the sink and literally uh, put it out so make sure you know where the water sources are the sinks the toilets the tubs all that kind of stuff in case you have to put out your sage in a moment's notice now to keep in mind when you're doing your sage is when was the last time you saged that property? Now, a lot of times when people call me out to sage their property because they're having negative energy, a lot of times they've just saged or they've tried to remove the energy and they didn't do a good job or kind of ended up trapping the energy and then I have to go out there. So knowing when the last time that property was saged is really, really important because you can excessively or over sage a place and that will literally end up not only removing all the negative energy, it's going to remove all the positive energy. And it takes a lot of energy to get that positivity to come back in. When you're saging a place, you can also go from a little bit of out of, out of balance to a lot out of balance because you're over saging the area. You're cleansing out too much energy. If you've never learned how to do sage properly, I will say learn with someone who really knows what they're doing. When I first learned how to do sage, I was a student of the world because I went to a tribe of people and literally asked them, how do you sage and tell me all about this. And I learned the proper ways to hold the sage, to deal with the sage, to cleanse out the energy. It was literally so many lessons. It wasn't just like here, this is how you do it, go do it. There were a lot of lessons for me to learn and it's really important that you understand those basic lessons as well before you start to sage. So many times people literally go, I'm going to sage the area and they grab a wand and they light it up and they start flinging it around. And a lot of times they don't understand what they're doing because nine times out of 10, they're trapping that energy and not releasing it.